rough and rowdy three on threes. Ooh, baby. All right. Great name. Promote, yeah, we try to promote a little physicality here. We used to uh, – Yale has a, a drill similar to this. They call it Fight Club. We adapted it and took it a step further and call it rough and rowdy. Um, Do you have to citation that that name uh, with the Barstool team or – uh maybe we can work out some type of sponsorship deal got it um but you know we haven't figured it out yet so for the purpose of setup this is from the fall in the fall we did a lot of our middies were playing both ways and in early on our face-off guys were doing a lot of the defense so if you see some really brutal short stick defense there's a good chance it's a face-off guy um but the way the drill is set up so we have three lines here one right here one down on the wing one down on the wing the ball always starts with uh, basically like an inbounds pass from top center. And that guy has the option to throw either way. So everybody's got to be ready to play on the, on the initial. Whichever way he goes, they're going to play two on two. So here he fakes, actually goes this way. So they're going to go two on two here. Defensively, we've got to evaluate where are we on the field. We have the goal move back. We're in the girl's crease here. So you've got a little bit of like the fan as a reference point. Um, and I'll touch kind of like our pick ideas in a, in a second after I talk about the drill setup. But what we're working on here is now this is a two-on-two. -two. Offensively, Coach Kelleher likes these guys to really probe and probe and try to get the middle and try to get top side. If we don't get it, roll back. Let's repick. Let's not be afraid to be patient here. And then what they're reading is if they can get to the middle and get down Main Street, either I'm going to run down the middle and shoot, or if they can get us to go adjacent, which I don't want us to do and why you probably won't see many of them because I do hammer our guys. Your job is not to go adjacent here. But if they do get us to go adjacent, then they can activate this guy by throwing ahead and letting him step into a shot. Nice. So what you'll see a lot for us is we, we uh, have separated the field into two areas. We have the Bronx, which is the area in front of our net. Or you don't come into the Bronx. It's a tough place, right? So the area directly in front of our net, um, it's kind of like 12 by 12, um, you know, kind of like the, the width of the hash is roughly maybe a little wider and then 12 yards high. Basically, we want to apply a lot of ball pressure there. We don't want guys to be able to just step in and shoot it over the pick. Uh, and then everything else is Omaha, like Omaha, Nebraska, right? What do you think of when you think of Omaha, Nebraska? It's spacious. It's the great plains of the Midwest, right? Mm. So if we're out in Omaha, which is out on the wings. Anything from the back of the crease to the end line is considered Omaha, part of why we play off. Um, and that dictates sort of the ball pressure and off ball positioning. Anything outside the box um, is considered Omaha. So our primary function in Omaha is we want to navigate the pick first and foremost. Uh, and that can be loosening up, getting below the pick, uh, rather than applying a ton of ball pressure. Cause I'd rather just keep the matchup. Uh, and then our off ball guy, your job is to give your guy enough space to navigate the pick. If you're right up on your guy in Omaha, it's now a double pick and he's got to give even more space. So you are going to see, we are getting close to the fringe of the Omaha Bronx border here. Um, but what you'll see is a lot of our off-ball guys, they do step off um, to let our guy through the pick action here. Right, so you see our, our guy can easily navigate that. Now, if we were in the Bronx, let's say we're a little tighter, like really in this red arc, I'd want our on-ball guy, you hear Bronx, Bronx, Bronx from the guy covering the, uh, the picker. You've got to step up and ball pressure that guy away from the pick action, right? If you step nice. up, you won't allow him to run off the pick the way he wants. He's got to change his path. The pickers got to change their path, and you might even negotiate a moving pick. Um, and when we're in the Bronx, too, we want our off-ball guy stepped up on his man so that if we do have contact, we can just switch it and be right on it because we cannot just sit off and let them shoot. Not trying to pump your tires here, Coach, but that's sick that you use language not only like pick left but where the pick is. That's always yeah. interesting. How so our, ver our, verbiage is, our verbiage is pick left or right and then where you are on the field. Pick left, that's Bronx. Cool. Pick left Omaha, and that right. signals to the guy on ball. And now, listen, you should have an idea where you are on the field. It shouldn't be like, wait, I'm in the Bronx? When did that happen, right? Like, you should have an idea. <laughs> um, but it does give uh, the on-ball guy an indication of where your brain is. Well, I view we're in Omaha. I'm going to loosen up. You get around that pick. Yeah, yeah I, lo I love those reference points, too, because, like, you guys, it looks like you have your own lacrosse stadium. You might play in other stadiums where it's football – I think coaches sometimes defensively get so technical and then you all of a sudden are playing at like Sholokoff field and there's no lines. You're like, what's the difference between like eight yards and nine yards and like guys get thrown off. And also like, what I'll say too is like, listen, I say for like this drill, cause the drill starting kind of right at the edge of what would be considered the Bronx and Omaha. And one thing that I definitely try to 
do is tell our guys, like, I'm not, like, obsessed with you identifying Bronx or Omaha correctly. I'm more obsessed with you and the other guy doing the same thing. Yeah. So right. you might see a couple of the guys in this drill approach it like it's Bronx. You might see a couple of guys approach it like it's Omaha. I don't really care as long as we navigate the pick or we play the two-on-two the same way with the two guys. Mm-hmm. Can you run it? I want to watch. Yeah, let's see more of this. That's two freshmen. We get contact. We got to switch. And I don't it's love moving this. Kinda, our on-ball guy does a terrible job of dictating to this guy where he can go. And then he almost finds the pick. It's probably moving, but still, yeah. we're not on the same page there, two freshmen. And honestly, Coach Kelleher coach, is probably going to be coaching this guy up. They get something. If this guy is more active and can step in, hmm. I think this is a primary throw ahead. Yeah. Off shot. This was the first day we ever did this drill, so our guys are feeling it out a little bit. Now, Coach, you guys ever do this from X and just change your point of, uh, of pick or point of contact? Yeah, we'll do a little bit. Um, from X, sometimes we'll even do it like not so much directly in the middle, but like cones stacked. So two on this mm. side, two on that yep. side, and throw down and then let the guy go set maybe like a razor pick or just a straight up down pick um, just to mix it up a little bit. Got it. Cool. Oh, let's get in there. Yeah. These guys approach it more like the Bronx than they do Omaha, right? Because we, we are pretty deep here, right? You can see our guy on the picker right up on him. Our guy on ball is trying to provide some ball pressure, which we get contact, which happens, so we got to switch. And the big thing, I think this gets lost in translation too, just in general in pick play, if you get that switch, you got to get two guys on two guys, right? Like if you call switch, both guys have to make contact with their new guy. Because what you'll find sometimes is the kid that guarded the original ball carrier will just kind of like drift and follow it, even though they Mm -hmm. switched. And then that's a quick throwback and it's right down your throat. I think our guys do a pretty good job of staying organized here. This time we apply a little more ball pressure, get kind of a free switch back, and we'll give up mm. that shot. We're cool with that. Low angle, our goalie handles that. He's a big boy. So you could really evolve this drill into Slippo's yeah. drill. Throw a guy yeah. at X, bang, you're in it. All right, we got a switch there. Oh, a little check. I also tell our guys, you'll see us, our defensemen chase it out of the drill. I tell our D guys, you got to overkill it. Even if it's out of the drill, you got to go pick it up. Nice. One thing we'll do with this drill, too, is we build up. We'll do our pick action here when we want to work on maybe some weavage, mm. where this guy now doesn't have the option to roll. And now he has to either get downhill, throw ahead, and repick the other side. Mm. Cool. Nice. I like it. So that's, yeah, our, that was... that's our build up. I don't have the film for us, but that we do build up to that. That's. We forget. Well, I think that's the point of both of these drills, Coach. I mean, you can stuff. create these drills, these small parts that simulate your hole. 